Well, another day, another video. So explain, so this is, sorry, Cloud Architect uh, and Design, 13% of the Cloud Plus CompTIA exam. Uh, 1.3, explain the importance of high availability and scaling in cloud environments. So uh, once again, we're grabbing this right from CompTIA's objectives right here. And we'll go through each one of these, okay? Uh, and then there's just one more, sweet, in this section. And then we have another section, happy day. Um, okay, so hypervisors and oversubscription. This is an interesting one. Um, before we get here, I want to step back a little bit um, and talk about, uh, we did the capacity planning it plays a little bit into this. Um, capital expenses are expenses that you pay for once uh, and then you have something. So um, the server that you buy. Uh, the operational expense would be the power. It's the ongoing charges. Um, so part of the shift to cloud is moving some of these capital expenses to be operational. Uh, but even in operational, uh, we there's some things that we can do to kind of cheat. So um, hypervisors. With affinity rules, yeah, we'll do this first and then we'll do over, because I was getting into oversubscription, but um, affinity rules. So affinity says, let's keep something together. Uh, maybe you want something on the same host because it needs really quick interaction um, or in the same zone or uh, anyway, there's a lot of things that you could do with affinity rule, rules, keeping it together. An anti-affinity rule is keeping it apart. So uh, you have things that you might need to keep, keep together, certain data, but anti-affinity might be you have multiple uh, systems that are working in a cluster. So you have the, the exact same uh, and they're working as, as a cluster. If one host goes down, you don't want that entire cluster to go down. So you might want to have uh, them not to be on the same hosts and maybe even not even in the same zone. Um, so that's something that hypervisors can do. Uh, the other thing is, is we can oversubscribe. So you can oversubscribe your compute capacity. Uh, just because you have told the system that it has so many CPUs at so many Hertz, doesn't mean that they have it all the time. Um, with oversubscription, we are expecting that some people will be idle while others are busy, um, especially when it comes to compute. Uh, same with the network. Uh, you probably are not using all the network all the time. Um, so when someone's not using the network, they can use um, what you uh, are not using. Storage is a little different. Um, storage, it's are, are the disks full um, or not? And when it comes to a disk, a virtual disk, uh, you can thin provision it or you can thick provision it. Thin means you only give it what it's using. And then when it needs more space, it has to then request it and get ex things expanded. So there is a performance degradation there. Um, full um, doesn't have that degradation, but even with full, you can deduplicate. Deduplicate is if there's exact two same things on disk in one computer versus another one. You don't have to copy it twice. Uh, you can just store it once and have a pointer, right? Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do there. Uh, with compute, I talked mostly about CPU. I want to talk about memory. Uh, memory is the main thing when, that I've seen oversubscribed um, that causes problems. So uh, whenever I did virtualization, so this is private cloud, um, I did my best not to oversub oversubscribe memory. Memory is uh, memory is really fast. Disks are really slow. And if you oversubscribe memory, then they're using disk. Um, and that's just 
uh, it's orders of magnitude difference in speed. It's not a good a good thing. I, I have not seen a system that works well oversubscribed with memory. Um, so I did my best to avoid that. Okay, regions and zones. So zones are a grouping of data centers. Uh, and most of my experience here is with AWS. So AWS's data centers are close together with high speed connectivity. Um, so that to be in a zone so that you don't really notice much that it might be in different um in fact you have sites uh, uh anyway uh, that it's a different data center so availability zone is a grouping of data centers then you have a region a region is a grouping of availability zones once again with high speed connectivity but each availability zone inside of a region in AWS needs to be um, far enough apart and not have the same issues that you might have with the other one. So uh, let me give you an example. Um, if one is by the coast and could be affected by a tidal wave, the other one wouldn't be that close to the coast. Uh, if one's by a fault line, one uh, availability zone, the other availability zone would not be by that same fault line. Um, so they're geographically apart far enough that they're not as affected by the other. Um, one of the reasons I don't think we'll ever get one in Hawaii is because one of the things we worry about here, besides tidal waves and hurricanes, um, is war. And we just don't have that geographical separa uh, separation, I think, uh, that we would need to do an entire region and the need. Um, but who knows? Maybe we will. So I have a link here to the global infrastructure with AWS. Uh, you can look at the availability regions. So this is regions. And green is currently in use. So you see there's like a ton here. And red is coming soon. There's a Canada one coming soon. That has information about them. Um, South America has only one. Europe has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So almost as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the same as uh, as North America. Middle East has two and a third coming soon. Africa has one. Uh, Asia and the Pacific has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. Um, and Australia has two, three, two, well, one and two coming, uh, th that area. Now, not all of these are, are equal. So if I look at America, the um, Virginia one, right, U.S. West one right here, uh, has six availability zones and 12 local zones. And this one has three availability zones. This is the government cloud. Talked a little bit about that in a prior video. Um, so... In order for most things to be offered, you need at least three availability zones, okay? Uh, so let's come back to, to Asia. So if we look here, this has four. This one has three. This one has three. So some of these have four and, and, and other things, right? Um, so anyway, they're not all created equal. Uh, the prices will be slightly different, mostly because power is different, uh, cost different in the areas, but not much. Um, I, I haven't seen a huge difference. Now, there's a lot of different regions, though, because companies, so let's go back to Europe. Europe has, for example, the Global Data Protection Right, GDPR. GDPR. Yeah. Um, and there's, you, there's a, you can't hold the private data of their citizens outside of, the, uh, of Europe. There's all these different rules. Um, so... And other companies have countries have similar uh, things. So you might have to store data in a certain country in order to meet certain regulations or laws. But you also might want to have multiple uh, regions just so if there is a problem, say in North America, you have something as well in the Middle East or Africa or Asia, anyway, uh, or Europe. So and you get that higher availability, which we'll be talking about in a bit. Okay, back to here. Uh, oh, let me go back. 
So you can see that's the one we're on. So now we're going to architecting. So when you're architecting, you have applications that need to run somewhere somehow, right? Containers is one way of doing it. Um, and containers are kind of like virtual v, virtual host, but they're not. Uh, they're really stripped down, um, but they kind of are. Um, and then you can run things in clusters. So a cluster, it would be you have multiple things doing the same thing and you can knock one out. Um, and do two, two things, things we're going to cover in a little bit, bit it shouldn't matter much. much. Okay. So, so uh, in, in order to get this higher availability, availability and I say higher because high availability doesn't make much sense to me. We, we, we're always trying to get a little higher than we were, right? Um, switches. So you can do higher availability of switches with routers, just do multiple and set up the rules. Uh, and load balancers. So load balancers is where you have a Usually you have more than one as well, uh, but you hit the load balancer and then the load balancer directs you to the system behind the scenes. That's what, so what you can do is you can have, let's say you have three systems doing the exact same thing and you need to patch one. So you pull it out and then the load balancer just sends it to the other two while you patch one, you put it back in and then you pull another one out and you patch it. And people don't even know that you had to bring systems down to patch them because the load balancer uh, was only sending it to the ones that were ready and available to accept um, traffic. And then, of course, we use firewalls for security to be able to filter out requests that we don't want um, or things that uh, and only allow specific things that we do want. Um, OK, so avoid single points of failure um, whenever possible you want to avoid single points of failure the failures are going to happen you should plan to fail so that when something does go wrong the entire system can keep going uh, that's why i'm saying when you patch it you just pull one out patch it and you stick it back in so um you can also, with planning to fail, you have to worry about what if all of a sudden we become super popular um, and things just explode and we need lots of capacity right now. That's where auto scaling can come in. Um, so with auto scaling, what you could do is you can say, okay, I need a minimum of, I usually say minimum of two if it's a small system, because I always want, if there's an error with one, that's one still up and running while the other one gets fixed or whatever. But you can set a max of however high you'd like. Um, and usually be try and understand where the the bottleneck capacity would be if we got crazy busy. Um, and then you can scale in different ways. So I like horizontal scaling. So horizontal scaling, I, I mentioned that um, say we had three of the exact same thing. Well, if we got busy, we just add a fourth and then a fifth, and then a sixth. Uh, where vertical scaling would be, well, we have three of the exact same thing. If we get busy, let's just put it on beefier systems, right? So we only had two CPUs, now we'll have four CPUs in each of those. Um, or we only had, uh, yeah, uh, we only have this size of a network, maybe we up the network size. So. Uh, vertical scaling is increasing the size of the system it's on. Horizontal scaling is just adding additional nodes. And then cloud bursting is usually used when your computing peaks at usually your local company. You reach capacity and then you, you use the cloud to fill in that gap. And that can be used with the auto scaling, right? So auto scaling, we can scale up to this point. And then after this point, we just don't have the hardware to run it anymore. Uh, so we're going to rely on the cloud. So uh, anyway. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next video.